Amen. Well, I'm just very thankful to the Holy Spirit um, and his work in our hearts and our understanding. <clears throat> I know that so many times I uh, think I know something and I don't. <clears throat> I'm having to teach this class and I I'm sure I say things at times with authority or whatever, <clears throat> but that authority is never in the spirit of that I know it all or even that, it, more particularly that I even know this, but I'm knowing it. I'm knowing the Lord and the Holy Spirit is very carefully uh, sharing with me and uh, as I told you last week, I mean, even this, this week and even today, the whole day, basically, other than my dog, <laughs> has been given <clears throat> to sitting before the Lord and just trying to hear from him. And I will say that I um, had a little bit of a breakthrough because one of the chapters that are, I've, I've felt from him that he wants to get to and really get into, um, <clears throat> I have been working on for day after day after day for several weeks, and I just felt like I sort of had a breakthrough today with not so much what I'm going to share, but how I'm supposed to share it. And... Um, <clears throat> I don't know if it'll ever work out, <clears throat> but, but it would be nice to be able to use the setup that Kelly has used for her class on one particular portion where we all could be sort of in a, <clears throat> a discussion type mode. We'll have to see how that'll work out, but I'd love to hear the people on Skype sharing and see their faces and, and, and inputting us because we need the Jesus they have just as much as, you know, they need us. Um, <clears throat> we all need one another, and we need the Lord. <clears throat> so anyway, okay, if you're there, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, <clears throat> and um, uh, let's go to verse uh, 12 and 13. And here he mentions uh, part of this dying that we were talking about in the last class, that this is actually a part of what he considers Christ crucified. Uh, and labor working with our own hands. <clears throat> and God willing, if we, get a, if we get the opportunity, that very phrase we're going to dig into major and show how it, it's not just a phrase, how Yes, it's, it's fortified with verse 9, proven that this is the death. But we're going to see that it is absolutely Christ crucified to Paul. No question about it, and a lot of scriptures to confirm that. <clears throat> All right. Uh, labor working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we endure it. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world, and are they off scouring of all things unto this day? All right. <clears throat> um, there is in, <clears throat> um, in Christ crucified. Now, when I say that, <clears throat> I'm first and foremost referring back to what Jesus went through how he went through it, the spirit in which he went through it, the cross, meaning Christ crucified, how he bore, how he, how, how he um, being reviled, blessed, how uh, being persecuted, he endured, how being defamed, he, we, <clears throat> he was made as the filth of the world and the offscouring of all things. Um, there is <clears throat> this aspect of Christ crucified <clears throat> that is non-retaliatory. Now, 
What you have to see, though, <clears throat> is that it is not a doctrine of not retaliating against someone. You really have to see that. Because there is, um, you know, there's peace movements and there's uh, um, nonviolent movements, you, know, you understand what I'm talking about, that aren't necessarily Christ crucified. They're not, you know. Um, <clears throat> You know, for example, I don't know, the present day thing, the Occupy whatever, you know, Occupy Denton, Occupy whatever. And uh, in some of the places they have a <clears throat> non-retaliatory understanding uh, as to how they will proceed so that if they're sitting there having a peace thing like this, you know, and they're protesting, and they're holding their things, and the police come up, they will not throw rocks and stuff at them and all this kind of stuff. And if the p police start hauling them off to the paddy wagon to take them to jail, they don't fight or do anything like that. <clears throat> all right. Um, I'm pretty sure that most of that is not Christ crucified. Okay, I'm just, I I'm, I'm trying to make a point here. <clears throat> and that is, a lot of things can look like Christ crucified, but it's not him. And it's not him in relationship to the cross. <clears throat> um, and even in Christianity, we can do that. But more importantly, and the point that I really want to make is, is that there really is no doctrine of non-retaliation. There is only the spirit of the Lamb or the spirit of Christ crucified. And that's, I mean, I know that sounds whatever it sounds. I know it sounds like something, whatever that is. But it's a very important point because a person can believe in nonviolence, use the example of Christ, and it just really not be applicable because Jesus is not a peacenik. I'm sorry if that goes way, way back past the hippies into the beatniks, but he's not a peacenik. He's not a, um, he's, he, he doesn't have uh, a sense of nonviolence in the sense of that's his doctrine or his, his you know, way of, <clears throat> of uh, teaching his followers. He's not teaching us nonviolence or non-retaliation. The Holy Spirit is teaching us Christ crucified. And out and if it's Christ crucified, it's more than nonviolent or non-retaliatory. It's power. It's power to produce something. Because Christ crucified is the power and the wisdom of God, okay? <clears throat> and that is, you know, we're not, uh, some people say, well, just show them up for, for, for example, and I don't mean anything by this other than an example, and I, if I had it here, I'd read it for you, but something that um, Martin Luther King said, <clears throat> um, and if I, I read it to you, basically, I mean, most of it is really good, but it has this aspect of, you know, uh, they will beat us until they are ashamed, and we will take it. And honestly, or, or until they're seen, here's, here's part of it, until they are seen for what they really are. You know, do you at least understand what I said? Okay, um, folks, Jesus took it out of love and concern to help them become something that they never could have become. I mean, he, he is loving them every step of the way, even if it hurts, and it did hurt. Okay. Um, so... Um, this, so <clears throat> he's not trying to show up his enemies. He's loving his enemies. He is, 
not trying to defeat his enemies. He's trying to be defeated so that his enemies will be able to reach plateaus that they never could have reached, for lack of a better way of putting it. You know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> um, and so, uh, so there just has to be a, a clear distinction once we start getting into this area because there's so much uh, other around us and that we can hear about and it's even a great example or a really beautiful thing um, <clears throat> but one thing you have to remember is that uh, for for protesters to stand there and um, uh, I'm thinking of <clears throat> like Occupy Berkeley or something, I think it was. one. Uh, it wasn't Berkeley, it was one up over there in California. And they're all just lined up, sitting down with their heads like this, and the, the police are just walking along with a can of mace and just spraying them, you know, or pepper spray probably, not mace, but pepper spray, and just spraying them. And then some of them, you know, their just face is just covered with it. <clears throat> and um, um, it's... Uh, making the one doing the thing look bad. Okay, I got news for you. Jesus took it into himself to look bad. He didn't try to change it. That was, that was you know, it wasn't about himself. It wasn't about getting back or, you know, showing up or uh, it it was about the being of the Lord that is selfless to the point that it'll take all the blame and let everybody think that they're the worst instead of trying to show them up as the worst. Can you at least see? That's a big contrast. It's a huge difference. <clears throat> and and uh, so that's why I really felt like before I get too much into these scriptures, we really needed to have a true comprehension of non-retaliatory because even saying the words not retaliating or non-retaliatory musters up a whole lot of stuff that's not Christ crucified. <clears throat> so if we start on this basis, I think, I think we'll do good. <clears throat> um, uh, so, I didn't read anything last class, so I'm going to read a little bit this class. <clears throat> um, this idea of being non-retaliatory as to how one proceeds in life or as an approach to negative statements by others did not originate with Paul, and, and this is Paul speaking here. Being reviled, we bless. You see, being defamed, we entreat, we are made the filth of the world and are the offscouring of all things unto this day. <clears throat> it didn't originate with Paul. It originated with Jesus. Okay? Um, it is Christ's approach as found in Matthew. So let's, let's just keep your place here, but uh, let's turn to Matthew and let's <clears throat> start getting sort of a little taste of this. Um, my belief is that the Sermon on the Mount and the, all the, the, the things that he shared in the fifth chapter and sixth and seventh chapter of um, um, Matthew 5 is uh, including the Beatitudes <clears throat> is not a teaching to people per se it is the proper words for the coming kingdom in other words without the king <laughs> without the life there's no way you're going to do this okay nor is there any way you should do this in a certain sense you know <clears throat> um, and so uh, in Matthew 5 verse well, let's start at verse 3. <clears throat> Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they who do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. <clears throat> but 
there's a, I don't know if I can even explain this. You may already know this beyond what I could ever say it. But there's a real bleeding over of this blessedness into what we would call the negative. Uh, blessed or blessed are the poor. Blessed are they that mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are they that are hungry. Hungering or, you know, just, just if you just went with regular lack of food. Um, <clears throat> I personally don't believe <clears throat> that just mourning, you know, being sad and mourning and crying, I just, I personally don't believe that that ends in com being comforted just automatically. I personally think that I have gone through mourning and times of stuff like that that wasn't the Lord, but I was mourning and I never got comforted over it. Okay. I'm not bitter, I'm just telling you the facts, you know what I'm saying? You know, that, you know, you're just weeping and crying. You know, I'll give you an example. You know, I grew up in an orphanage and, and in that orphanage, there were times as a little boy that I wanted my mom or something happened and I wanted... A, you know, a dad I could come run to or whatever. I don't even remember all the details, but I'm just saying that there were times and you lay there on your bed and there ain't nobody but a house full of other orphans, you know. And it's, it's real hard to get comforted by another orphan because he's in the same boat. I mean, if you understand, we're, you know, we're still in here <laughs> because we're, because our version of comforting, because our version of the kingdom, because our version of, you know, inheriting the earth and <clears throat> being filled, usually lean toward the wisdom of this world more than it is the wisdom that it was before the ages, the wisdom of the cross. <clears throat> and so, uh, so we're all messed up when we hear this from the very beginning. You know, we're all we're getting out of is okay. If well, I cry, then this is going to happen. Okay, so I'm going to cry or what? I don't know. You know, <clears throat> but I think I really believe that the Lord is trying to point us toward the kingdom stuff. And kingdom stuff is, you know, what is the kingdom? Where is the kingdom? Where is it? Anywhere Christ rules. But it's true. Anywhere it's it's in you. But that if we just say the kingdom is in you, then we just go, okay. Well, the kingdom's in me. But really, it's not just in you. It's anywhere the king rules, that's the kingdom. And I just think that I mean I'm not trying to you know put anything down or say what I'm saying is is better. It's just that without the king, these things are impossible. But with the king. Guess what? There's going to be, we're going to be poor in spirit. We're going to, we're going to mourn. We're going to be meek. We're going to hunger and do without for others. And if you do it by Christ crucified, it results in something. If not for you, then for someone else. That's the important thing, I think. And I, I think it's so, it's such an easy teaching, and our brains can wrap around it pretty easy. Well, blessed are the meek. Okay, well, you know. <clears throat> you know, I mean, I heard that the meek voted, you know, and said, well, we don't want the earth. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> said, no, you're going to inherit it. We don't want it. <laughs> All right. Um, verse 7, blessed are the merciful, <clears throat> for they shall obtain mercy. And just some of this wording just it just gnaws at me by the Holy Spirit who I just feel is like I'm trying to breathe into you being stuff. I'm not trying to teach you, you know, shut up, boy. You know, I mean he's not but I mean it's almost like I'm I'm so hard headed. Blessed are the merciful. The merciful, not blessed are those who show mercy. You will obtain mercy but not blessed are the mercy givers, but the merciful. How do, I, how do I express that? 
other than to just release it and ask the Holy Spirit, which I know that he is working and showing and, you know, again, probably taking you far beyond what I'm saying, but I, I just didn't want to run over these things because I feel Christ crucified being the fulfillment of it, and I want to redeem everything by the Lamb. Verse 10, blessed are they who are persecuted for righteousness' sakes, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. <clears throat> well, that's uh, for my sake, he says. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets who were before you. And what I get from that is oh how blessed how blessed you are to have these things to come upon you these great blessings of persecution and and saying thing all manner all manner come on I mean I, I know that that's hard if you hadn't really been through a whole lot you don't know what all manner is but I can tell you all a little bit all manner is wow some of the things that can be said about you okay and yet <clears throat> how blessed you are how incredibly blessed to have that come upon you and you to be able to handle that by Christ crucified for you to redeem ugliness, for you to redeem meanness, for you to redeem not, not by meditating on the ugliness or meanness of it, but the meditating on the blessedness and the beauty of being the Father. And that, that's, uh, I think it's coming up here. Um, if not here, pretty in one of the other scriptures I've got. For to do that, you shall you will be the sons of God, the sons of the Father. I think it's something like that. The word we'll see it here. <clears throat> that this is a high calling. That to God. To have a worldwide ministry is nothing compared to be able to be blessed, not cursed, with these things. Amen. To handle them by Christ crucified instead of being such a great minister and so full of pride and so full of yourself and so full of how big you are, that that enrages you to want to destroy them. And because you are big and powerful, you use what you have to make them look bad because when they look bad, you look better. But you don't, you're not cursed because of this, so you don't go that way. You don't want, you don't want to be cursed. Does this make any sense at all? You know, you are blessed, so you, so you grab it as an opportunity because to truly manifest Christ crucified, <clears throat> uh, for example, for Jesus to fully manifest his lamb nature took a horrible cross. And then it was shown in a million different aspects and light from the cross. <clears throat> Whereas if somebody just, you know, a Pharisee said something about, well, I don't like the way he healed last Sunday or whatever, you know what I mean? It's Saturday. Um, <clears throat> uh, you know, oh, I'm persecuted. I, you know, this is horrible, you know. And that's nothing but our self-pity, you know, uh, mind of the flesh <clears throat> that is probably puffed up and therefore it can't handle it. Okay, well, again, I'm not trying to get anybody to handle anything. I'm just saying, oh, the beauty when it comes as a blessing. That's all I'm saying. <clears throat> and then to be able to rejoice over it 
to rejoice and be exceedingly glad because um, through me, the living Christ, the real nature of God can be seen if by no one else but by the Father and he can rejoice in his son. Glory to God. See, glory to God. That's more than raising your hands and going, glory to God. I mean, come on. I mean, glory to God, glory to God. Do you think gl saying glory to God, glory to God gives God glory? I mean, really, if you, if you just, you know, if you could snap out of the religious stupor just long enough to see how stupid that, glory, 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 you know. I mean, that'd be like Deb following me around all day going, glory, 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 you're a great husband, glory, glory, glory. I'd say, shut up. And then she'd go, well, maybe you're not so good. <laughs> all right. Um, let's see if I have, okay. Uh, flip over, still in chapter 5, verse 38. <clears throat> you have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, but I say unto you, that you resist not evil. But whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. And, and so this is, this is the communication of Christ crucified, not the demonstration yet. The cross is the demonstration. But it is the communication of kingdom living. It is the communication of God's reality, not ours. Oh, so um, it's it's more than words. It's more than if somebody slaps you, turn the other cheek. What goes on through your mind? What ha what's happening on the inside of you? Is there a true? Death meaning is there a true reality of Christ crucified? Because if there is, there'll be life to them. And if there's not, you're just going through the motions. Why get slapped around? Hit them back. I mean, you know, I'm just... <laughs> well, I'm just saying, I mean, I, I, you know, I'm just trying to be real. You know, you feel like it, you want to. You know, but there's, you know, well, there's something holy about the fact that I don't, even though I'm enraged and want to destroy them. Well, I think there probably is a wisdom in not manifesting that. And that's my, I mean, I do. I, I really believe that. Um, but I also believe that the end result of that is, is that you're like a pot under a fire that is boiling and eventually one day this pot's going to explode and blow your kitchen out. You know what I mean? <clears throat> I mean, that's just my opinion. Uh, I would hope that, the, that you're in process and then eventually get down the road and, you know, uh, because what God does many times when we're about to explode is he, he just opens the little steam valve and it goes and we let off steam you know what I mean and the fire's still burning as hard as it was in us on us but at least he's opened a valve so that we don't blow can anybody say thank you Jesus <laughs> but the steam valve is not God's best it's, it's just you know and it's and, and it is his mercy that he does that but it's not his best. The, his best is Christ crucified in us. And that is not the process of turning the fire off. That's the process of being blessed under the fire, in the fire, in the midst of the fire, you know. I will not save you from the fire, but I'll be with you in the fire. <clears throat> All right. Um. If any man sue thee at the law and take away uh, thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. Okay. This one says sue thee at the law. I think uh, Luke says if somebody takes away your coat, give him your cloak also. Okay. 
I mean, how many of us, honestly, how many of us are going to do that? You know, how many people do you know that actually do that kind of stuff? It's going to take Christ crucified. And, but, we, but we have to take it out of a teaching session on the mount and, and start applying it because you're never going to know how far you are from the truth until you at least try to apply it and then go, you know, you know what, I am nothing like him, which is a great victory. That's the, that, now you're ready to start. <laughs> But if you never say that, then you, you never get to that point. <clears throat> Whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him too. And, you know, and in and all, and all honesty, we see somebody that's, you know, we're helping move their stuff. And they say, well, you know, I thought this was going to take an hour, but will you, you know, will you can help me for another hour? And we, you know, we go, we got to do the little adjusting thing. Okay, it's the Lord in me. Yes, I'll do it. Oh, thank you. You know. Well, you know, that's really not somebody compelling you, going, you, you know what I mean? I mean, somebody forcing you to do it. That's a whole different ball. Go, oh, I hate you for making me do this, you know? It's like Deb in the office or something like that or, you know, whatever. Me asking... Uh, Shay to, to do something, you know, out of the ordinary with the conference, but I say, I, I want you to do this, you know. Our first reaction is not that this applies to you or to, but, um, but our first reaction, my first reaction is, heck no, this ain't happening, you know. I mean, I, you know, the hippie movement basically was a rebellion movement. And it's in me, strong. And we glorified it. That's a fact, you know. I'll smoke this weed. I don't care what, you know. <clears throat> and uh, I'll grow my hair long and all this kind of stuff. So when somebody says, well, you, you know, you know, I'll just say it like this. When somebody says, well, I'm, I'm compelling you to do this, well, they're a cult. Wait a minute. So we don't want to be in a cult. Well, okay, we don't. And, you know, I see the problem with it. But I don't see any problem with anything if it's Christ crucified. I see that the, you know, and I'm not, uh, God knows that I'm not justifying this cult that, <laughs> that I'm the head of. Don't do anything I tell you to do so that I can finish teaching, <laughs> okay? Don't listen to me and don't do anything I'm telling you to. But if you were in any other place under any other circumstance with any other leader, is it not possible that Christ crucified could be put in any situation and that you be blessed by that situation because through that you could demonstrate him. Being reviled, reviled not, being compelled, we go further. You know. So what's all this muddy, mixed up seaweed of a explanation that we get of this stuff when it's just, you know, because it's all, you know, we got a million elements in there instead of purity, instead of pure water, instead of the living water, instead of, instead of out of your innermost being, you know. James deals with this where he says, you know, you know, you got pure water, clean water flowing out of you and bitter water. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. That's his words. <clears throat> um, well, we do. Th we got the double thing because we're trying to be Christ crucified, or we're trying to be lamb-like, or we're trying to be. And we, I shared on Sunday, and you all, most of you, were here for that. And you know that I 
nixed all that, <laughs> that I don't promote that, and I don't want to promote that. I just want to promote Jesus, and I want to, I want to say stuff that is true, and I want to make it true for me so that when I share this stuff, you, you, you don't feel any pressure to do it, but you do feel that you should see it in me and maybe even test it sometimes. You know, because I don't want to be afraid of that. I want to be blessed by it. I want to, I, I want this Jesus. This is the Jesus I want. And not everybody wants this Jesus, and I'm not saying I'm better than them. I'm just saying this is the Jesus I want. That's, that's all. You've heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. And, you know, where do you see that at? Christ crucified. You see him hanging on the cross and you see them cursing him and mocking him and shoving spears in his side and, you know, doing all this kind of stuff. And he doesn't curse them. He loves his enemies like he loved his disciples and he blesses them and he says, Father, forgive them. But you're, that's where you see it is Christ crucified. And that's, where the only where, that's the only place we're going to see it in us this is if it's Christ crucified. Not, the, not just the cross, not just the two pieces of wood. But there at the two pieces of wood, we saw Christ crucified. There we met the true and living God. <clears throat> and then here, here's the one I was trying to talk about. <clears throat> Let me finish verse 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them who despitefully use you, Father. Forgive them. Pray for them. And who despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the sons of your Father. Not that you may be of God, not that you might be a moral Christian or a Christian of integrity or a great man of God or woman of God or have a great ministry or any of that stuff. He doesn't go there with it. Jesus wouldn't go there with it because he knows that this is a family affair. If it's nature, it, it's in the family. And if it's not, it's in another family. And, of course, none of us fit this bill. You've got to remember that. That's why we need Jehovah Jireh. He provides the lamb, his lamb, Amen. even in us. Yeah. And so, in verse 48, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father who is in heaven is perfect, even as your Father. And this, uh, well, you know... <laughs> Um, you know what, let's go to uh, 1 Peter. Because we heard from Paul, and there's more to hear from Paul, actually, but we're going to go to 1 Peter chapter uh, 2. I dealt with this fairly recently, but... <clears throat> 1 Peter 2.18, Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but to the perverse. That's my translation. Uh, what kind of teaching is that, folks? No, I mean, really, if you just be honest, what kind of teaching is that? That's in your Bible. That's not, it. That's not even me. That's right there blatantly in your Bible, and yet... Almost nobody would want to submit to a thing like that. But he's, he's, a, he's assuming that you're in the family. He's assuming you have the family spirit, the spirit of what we call it, the, the family of sacrifice. That's on Sunday morning when I shared. We called it the family of sacrifice, that the father and the son went together to the altar. Did you have your hand up? Yeah, just say Uh, 
Christ crucified. Well, and I, I, you know, I'm no different than anybody else. I fight the same monster, me. You know? There's none any better than anybody else. We all need the Lord. And you can be Christian without Christ crucified living in you. But you can't be a son to your father. Now, that doesn't mean you're not in the family, but it means you can't be a son because he talks about being a child. Now, I say that the, chi- that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. That's over in Galatians chapter 4. Um, sonship is founded on the family spirit, and the family spirit is the, the spirit of sacrifice, of selflessness is better even, I don't know. There are, there are no words, honestly. There are no words. There are no words. Because it's not about being sacrificial. It's about Christ crucified. That's all you can say. And you say, well, you're just splitting hairs. <laughs> no, I'm not. All right. So, um, for this is thankworthy, if a man for conscience towards God endure grief, suffering wrongfully, Do you you even catch that? That this, see, even right now, I'm enduring grief wrongfully. (laughs) As Kelly's phone goes off and disturbs the class. I'm just kidding. But I mean, this is, you know, he's saying that what is thank worthy to God is not being delivered but enduring grief. Let's see. You think Jesus ever did? He was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Enduring grief and suffering wrongfully. That don't seem right. Well, guess what? It's not right. That's the wrong tree. You're looking at the tree of the knowledge of good or evil and trying to figure out the, the verses of, you know, what good versus evil or whatever when it's this life, but it is this crucified life, this selfless, self-giving life. Um, what glory is it if when you're buffeted for your faults, you shall take it patiently? And I tell you what, I always thought it was a big deal when somebody blamed me for something that I did that I actually took it. You know, anybody know what I'm talking about? I mean, they say, you, you did wrong. You shouldn't have done that. And you, you know, that ain't right. And I went, you know, you're right. I'm taking this patiently. I thought that was really way up there with God. Well, I mean, I mean you know, I, I'm an idiot, but I, I you know, I did until I began to actually do something weird, read the word and see what God says is thankworthy to him. But if when you do well and suffer for it and you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. Well, folks, that's a sacrifice and there's only one acceptable sacrifice. It has to be Christ crucified. It's not a sacrifice unless it's crucified. It's not acceptable unless it's Christ. You know, for even here unto were you called, because Christ suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow in his steps. And so we went over this, what, was this, wasn't Sunday, but recently, fairly recently. Um, but let's drop down to chapter 3, verse 9. Not rendering evil for evil. Does that sound anything like what we read in 1 Corinthians 4? It's almost the exact word some of this railing for railing but on the contrary blessing knowing that you're called to this knowing that this is how many of us take Christ crucified as our calling um, and yet first Corinthians chapter 1 for you see your calling brethren how not many really big shoddish persons are going to be 
this isn't your calling. It's the foolish and the weak. They're, they're the ones that are called to this because they're that by Christ. You can only be that by Christ. And if you're that apart from Christ, then the best that you can hope for is that you're so weak that you'll let it be Christ. I mean, one way or the other, you're going to end up with Christ crucified. You, you can't get around it. <clears throat> All right. Um, you know what? Let's just, let's go to Romans real quick. Romans chapter 12. I'll stomp around in Mallory's stomping ground a little bit here. That's okay, Mallory? Okay. <clears throat> All right, Romans 12 and verse 14. Bless them who persecute you. Bless and curse not. Have we heard that anywhere before? Okay. Folks, we're getting this from Jesus, we're getting it from Peter, we're getting it from Paul, we're getting it from Paul on all sides. And the conclusion of that is, if it's in the mouth of two or three witnesses, it's important. You know, if something is put in all four Gospels, it's a big deal. Some story or something like that, you know what I'm saying? So it's there for a reason. If it's only in one Gospel and not mentioned in the others, it's still important. But there's a reason that you got four witnesses, okay? Well, we're getting a lot of witnesses about this. Uh, again, not a good wording, but non-retaliatory way of proceeding because while Christ is not non-retaliatory, Christ crucified doesn't retaliate. Thank you all for saying amen, because I know that can sound like, well, what the heck is he saying, you know? Um, <clears throat> all right, verse 16, be of the same mind one toward another. Okay, what do you think that mind's going to be? Yeah, and it's going to be let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, so it's going to be the mind of Christ. So that's why the very next word out of it is, mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Immediately, it brings us down to bring others up. And we sh that's the way of Christ crucified. That's the honor of the, the union, if we can receive it. And if we can't receive it, then we push Jesus down to get on his shoulders to get up. And guess what? He doesn't mind. Because <laughs> he's so selfless. He doesn't get offended at that. It's wrong if you, if, you, if you use Jesus, it'll come back on you. But he will allow you to use him. So, so guess what? It doesn't come back on him. <laughs> I hope that makes a little bit of sense there. But that's... <clears throat> All right, verse 17, recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Verse 19, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will replace, saith, repay, saith the Lord. There, I just misread, missaid that word. Vengeance is mine, I will replay. That's us. We will replay that over and over, that bad thing they did to us. I mean, over and over. We, the needle will be so deep into that record. And they did that. <laughs> but it says, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, oh my God, don't we see what he says? I don't, I, I have heard this and seen people react. They say, okay. I wanted to kill them. I wanted to get them back. But the Lord God Almighty said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. We go, it'll be even worse for them when God gets them. Yeah, okay. I take my hands off of them. Sick them, pit bulldog. Look at the immediate words, aren't vengeance is my I will pay. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. 
What? I never hear anybody read the next sentence after that. I never hear anybody emphasizing the beauty of blessing what curses you and, and lifting up what, what has done its dead level best to destroy you. Usually the thought of vengeance being God's is a comforting thing because we know God will get them good. He says, well, I'm going to get you good if you don't, you know, uh, if your enemy hungers, you don't feed him. And if he thirsts, if you don't give him to drink. And the next sentence says something about heaping coals on his head, and I guarantee that's not what most of us think that means. Now, I, I'm not going to get into it now. I have studied it. I hope to one day myself share on the book of Romans and get into some of these things. But it would be absolutely in the opposite direction of everything he's been saying to say that, well, I just, you know, I'm doing this just to heap coals on your head. But somehow we like that, and that's the main one we get out of it. You know, not feed him, but heap coals. If this giving him this food will heap some coals, I'm ready to do it. <laughs> you know? All right, and then finally verse 21, be not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Okay, And what he's describing as good is not do goody good. Every example here is Christ crucified. It's not, you know, throw him a birthday party or, you know, it's all Christ crucified type things, you know. It's not, you know. And it's all exactly what Peter was talking about in the context that he was talking about of, you know, I want you, you know, God saying, I want you, if you're, if you're, uh, master is perverse and mean in everything. It is thankworthy to me if you endure grief and you go through this in a right spirit by my spirit. I love that. That's what I want more than I want to deliver you. Well, that right there get me hung in some churches. Maybe even this one. Just kidding. How much time we got? I know we're already past two here, but. Okay, <clears throat> so I could actually maybe read a few things here. <clears throat> Let's see. Let me just see. Um, these particular attributes of non-retaliation, suffering abuse at the hands of others, are considered by Paul to be the common approach of all who would follow Christ crucified. He presents them time and time again in terms of, get ready, moral and ethical standards for Christian living, but punctuates that they are only the result of those who embrace Christ and him crucified. In other words, they're not moral standards. They're not uh, those kind of things, but they're presented that way. But you have to hear his full context. And, and I think that, I think that uh, 1 Corinthians 4 is a perfect example where he said all those same words that we've been reading. To him, the only true means of showing that you love your enemies is to not retaliate against them. But to stand up for them in prayer and selfless giving. Of course, this makes those who approach things by Christ crucified appear to others as weak or guilty, which is what Jesus appeared as. <clears throat> but it is Christ to them, and they want Christ more than they care for their reputation. This is in accord with Jesus on the cross, even as we are to be. This is in accord with Jesus who loved his enemies by hanging on a cross they put him on, appearing as a person of ill repute to everyone, but taking it all for them and for their benefit. <clears throat> all right, let's just finish out the last couple of verses here in 1 Corinthians. We are very close. 
<clears throat> We'd mentioned this, these verses uh, earlier, but uh, verse um, 15, <clears throat> um, for though you have 10,000 instructors in Christ, you have not many fathers, for in Christ I have begotten you through the gospel. Um, so I wrote 10,000 tutors, those who stand as those who know, who instruct the lesser. Remember, that's exactly what he was talking against in the first three chapters leading up to this. 10,000 of those, but there are not many fathers. A father loves his children and corrects them for his benefit. A father has imparted his being to those children. Okay? Um, and then, uh, so he says, not many fathers. Um, verse 16, wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. His goal is not become of Paul, remember? Don't be of Apollos of them. That, he's, he's totally already shown that's the wrong way. He's saying, I am of Christ crucified. I've shown it in this fourth chapter. This is the way we live. And, and you were birthed out from that spirit, not mine, but the Father's. But I'm walking in that. Follow me, and he'll say this later on. Uh, what is it, chapter 11, verse 1? Be ye imitators of me while I imitate Christ. His, he always points back to Christ crucified. He never claims it for himself. He only claims it through himself. So that's his spirit here, and he's, he's declaring that. Um, and then let's say I, I said... Uh, so in verses 9 through 14, we see the life that they are living based on a voluntary embrace of Christ crucified. Um, off scouring of the earth, being reviled, we revile not, uh, defamed, um, all of those things. <clears throat> we see the life they're living based on a voluntary embrace of Christ crucified. Paul beseeches them to follow him in the path he has chosen and not to continue in the path of their own understanding. His is the path of the true throne and true reigning. The lamb reigns even in being slaughtered. It's the slaughtered lamb sitting on that throne. <clears throat> All right. Um, I think what I'm going to do next class is... Um, I'm just going to, uh, I'll just let you know, I feel really, really impressed to uh, get on to uh, chapter 8 and 9 and 10 and as far as I can go from there. Um, but next class, I think we'll hit a little bit in chapter 5, a little bit in chapter 6, and a little bit in chapter 7. And in those little bits... <clears throat> There are different subjects, completely different issues, and I'll show you he's still staying with Christ crucified, that that's still his point. His answer is always Christ crucified, and it'll always be we go down into death that others may be raised up. It's always how he ends up on this, this thing. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your spirit, and may he have free course in our heart, and may the word of God be, be more than ink on white paper, but may he lift it right off the page into living reality as we see your son, as we see Christ crucified, as we comprehend not kingdom teachings, as some would say the Beatitudes are, or, or non-retaliatory teaching, as others would say. But as we see your power, as we see your wisdom, may we have the spirit of it. We ask in Jesus.